Am I on? There, now I'm on. All right. Steve was snapping his fingers at me. I got, I got these two up here uh, fussing at me already. You'd think I hadn't been here for two or three weeks, so uh, I haven't. It is good to be back. Uh, good to see you this morning. Welcome to Epworth United Methodist Church. We're so happy that you have chosen to be uh, present with us here this morning for this time of worship. If We also want to welcome those who are joining us on Channel 6, those who are uh, joining us on Facebook Live and on YouTube. Uh, we're, always, uh, we're always excited to have folks uh, join us for worship. If you're, if you're here today, I want to invite you to fill out a little blue card, put that in the plate when it comes by a little bit later, the offering plate. We'd love to have record uh, of your presence with us. If you're worshiping with us online or on television, call and uh, call the office, let us know, or give us, a, uh, give us a, a hi and a like on Facebook. Let us, uh, let us know that you're worshiping with us there. Uh, if you're worshiping with us uh, from, uh, from, uh, remotely from uh, places on TV or, or the Internet, uh, I want to encourage you also to, uh, you can either send uh, your, your gift or your offering to the church office by regular mail, or you can... Uh, you can uh, uh, make a donation online uh, through the appropriate way. Steve knows all that. I don't know any of it, but, uh, but, uh, but it all works. Uh, Steve is in the sound booth this morning. Uh, Sherry is home sick, so keep her in your prayers. Uh, I know we've got a lot of people that are, that are struggling with all kinds of, of health things. Uh, there's, there's a lot of of uh, stuff going around, so please uh, keep yourself safe, wash your hands, uh, wear your mask if you're not feeling well, and, uh, and keep healthy and keep those around you healthy. Uh, we want to pray for all those who are not with us uh, this morning, but it is good to be back. Glad to see you all here. Let us, let us prepare our hearts let us prepare our minds for this hour. You're here, not by accident. God has called you to this place at this moment to be present with each other in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And that is a good thing. So we're going to lift our voices together in praise. We're going to pray together. We're going to hear the word read and hear a word proclaimed. We are going to, to worship uh, the risen Christ this morning. And you are part of it. Good morning. If you will please stand and join me in singing our hymn of praise, God of grace and God of glory. Wisdom. 
invite you to respond uh, to the uh, bold part of our call to worship. You'll see the bold words in, uh, on the screen or also printed in your bulletin. Friends, God has made everything suitable for its time. God has given us a sense of past, present, and future. It is God's gift that we find peace and joy in this lifetime. For whatever God does, endures forever. So we come before God with awe and wonder. We worship God who has given us eternal life. Amen. Amen. You will read standing this morning for our songs of praise and worship starting with light of the sky. Hi. Sure.
everything. I want to invite you to remain standing if you're, if you're able for the reading of our gospel lesson this morning from the gospel according to St. John. It's in the first chapter. And you remember in the first chapter of John, John starts out with this, with this grand theological statement about um, uh, the light coming into the world and the darkness will not overcome the light. And then right after that, uh, we begin to Jesus' story. John begins to Jesus' story, and he begins it with John the baptizer out in the wilderness. He's baptizing people, and he recognizes Jesus uh, coming uh, down the road and points him out and, and calls Jesus uh, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We pick up the story right after that moment. In the 35th chapter or the 35th verse of the first chapter of John's gospel, we read this. The next day, John was standing again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus walking along, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what John said, and they followed Jesus. And when Jesus turned and saw them following, he asked them, what are you looking for? And they, asked, and they said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you going? Where are you staying? Where are you staying? And he replied, come and see. So they went and saw where he, Jesus, was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. And one of the two disciples who heard what John said and followed Jesus was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. And he first, Andrew first found his brother Simon and said to him, we found the Messiah, which is translated or means the Christ. And he, Andrew, led him, Peter, or Simon, to Jesus. And Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated as Peter. The next day, Jesus wanted to go into Galilee, and he found Philip. And Jesus said to Philip, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. So Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we found the one who Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets, Jesus, Joseph's son from Nazareth. And Nathanael re responded, can anything from Nazareth be good? Philip said, come and see. And Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him and he said about him, here is a genuine Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And Nathanael asked him, <laughs> how do you know me? And Jesus answered, before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. And Nathanael replied, Rabbi, 
You are God's son. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the tree? You will see greater things than these. I assure you, you will see heaven open and God's angels going up to heaven and down to earth on the human one. Mm. Mm. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may have a seat. And as you're having a seat, I invite our youngsters. I'm already late. Uh, our youngsters come down. We'll have our time together. You don't have anything. Come on up here, girl. How are you? Are you okay? You okay? Yeah? Good morning. Good morning. Hey, that's pretty good for just a small group today. We got a small crowd. That's okay. Uh, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, it's good to see you. I have missed seeing you. You know, I have not been here at all this year. Isn't that wild? I have not been here at all this year. That's been, that's been, this is the third week, the third Sunday of the, of the year. What year is it? 2020 what? 2024. 2024. I have not been here at all in 2024 until today. And so I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad to be here with you and all these people too. So um, I'm kind of out of practice. So you got, you got, I see, I see you got something back here. You got the mystery bag. You don't have anything? Did you bring anything? You got something in there. You got something in there. It's soft. Feel that. What do you think? You think so? Let me see. I already know what it is. You already know? You cheated. No, well, I showed her. You showed her? You cheated. Oh my no, goodness. I didn't absolutely know. I just took that, a guess. I well, absolutely. Well, Quinn and I are going to figure this out, all right? I'll put it in my beanie. What, what do you think? You put it there, there. Yeah, there's a beanie, but there's something in the beanie. Something in the beanie. What is in? Take that, take that off of there. What is this? Puppy. It's a, yes, it's a puppy. puppy. It's a puppy. Yeah. So is this your puppy? Does he eat very much? No. He doesn't eat at all. All right. So what is this puppy's name? You don't have one. Just call him dog. You just call him dog? Yeah. You know, um, there, there's a John Wayne movie where John Wayne has a dog, and he just calls the dog dog. Did you know that? Some of you John Wayne fans know that, right? Yeah, I see, I see some hands out here. All right. All right, so um, so this this is this is your this is your stuffed dog, mm -hmm. and um, and so where did you get that? State fair. At the state fair. Yeah, you want to keep that because it's cold outside and you don't have a lot of hair. You need to keep some heat on that bald head, right? Me, me too. <laughs> I I know I don't have much hair either. That's okay. I, I'm bald too. All right, so that, that's yeah. There's uh, you're you're getting some help over here. So um, yeah, so Quinn's got the puppy. She's gonna hold it. So do you do this? Do you hold this puppy like this sometimes? You sleep with it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And and that's okay because because that get that makes it comfortable, right? Sometimes we need we need to feel we need to feel comfort, right? And 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 sometimes. Uh, when, when things are going really, really good, it's nice, and, and, and we've, got, we've got like a stuffed puppy or a stuffed bear or a stuffed kitten or a stuffed rabbit or a stuffed fish or what? A squishy. A squishy, yeah, a squishy. Got something squishy, and, and, you, and you can hug that, and you can just remember all the, the things that are, are good about life. And then sometimes when things are, are not going so good and you're kind of sad, you can, you can take your, your squishy and you can hug it and it makes you feel better, right? Uh, so, so um, 
I want to say sometimes, sometimes we don't have our squishies though. And, and we go through and we celebrate and we deal with tough times. And, uh, and, and, and sometimes Jesus sends people into our lives that can help us uh, both celebrate and to heal, right? And to heal. So uh, this reminds us that, uh, that God loves us enough that, that we have people in our lives to help us celebrate and to help us, help us heal. And that's a good thing. And, uh, and you guys can sometimes be the people that God uses to help others celebrate and to heal. So that's good. And Quinn has stuffed him back in the bag and uh, we are good to go. So thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for sharing that with us. Now, all right, I guess Quinn has got the handy dandy bag. All right. What? Quinn will not be here next week. All right, so Quinn, you're gonna have to share this next time. We're gonna, it's on you, sister. Are you gonna be here? Is Scar going to be here? Yes. Yes. All right. It's on you. All right. I might be alive because I've never been alive when Del has a note. And you got it. You got it. All right. So let's have a prayer. God, we thank you uh, for loving us, for uh, giving us uh, the gifts of people and squishies to help us celebrate good things and to heal when we're hurting. God, I thank you for these kids, for the families they represent, the homes they come from. There's a lot going on in their lives, a lot going on in all of our lives. So God, we pray for grace uh, for them. We ask that you will uh, uh, allow uh, them to live in such a way that the spirit, that your spirit is in them and shows to others and that others will see them in you and you in them. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll see you next week. We'll see all y'all next week. And they're gone. Man, alive. Yeah. I told Jill and Sam how good it feels to be back with you all today. It's been, been a while. And uh, I, got, I got two weeks built up. I, to, I told Samantha she just needs to sit back and get comfortable. I feel the love. I know, that's... That. You're not the first one. Jill said she knows what button my, mac my microphone is. So uh, anyway, it's, uh, if, if you see people jump up and start moving around, it's not an emergency. They're just going to go turn the sound off. That, that's all that means. So let's pray. Loving God. You've called us to this place. And we have gathered in person. We gather remotely and join on TV screens and computer screens. But still, even from afar, we are together with each other in this place. And you are here in our midst. Speak to us, O oh God, words that you would have us hear. Allow your servant to hide in the shadow of the cross. Grant that the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, pleasing and acceptable to you, O oh God, a rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen.
So in John's first chapter, there's a lot going on. We, we, didn't, we didn't start at the very beginning, but, but I, as I mentioned, there's, there's this whole uh, grand theological statement that is expansive and beautiful, this imagery of light and the darkness, and, and the darkness cannot overcome it. And then, then we begin, John begins the Jesus story with John the baptizer. Again, as I shared, and John uh, recognizes Jesus walking along and, and points him out, calls him out, and, and we pick up the story there uh, in, in particular. And, and at that point, man, there, there, there's even more that goes on. There, there, there are people that, that, that are walking all over the place, everywhere. There are people that are talking uh, with each other, talking to Jesus, talking amongst themselves. There are people looking. There are people listening. There are people following. There are people leading. There are, there are people coming and going. And, and, and it's a very busy scene. If we allow ourselves in our mind's eye to picture this, it's a very, very busy kind of a scene. Yet it all works together and all this busyness, all this activity all this stuff that's happening, it, it all works together uh, in, in a way that, that seems to make the point of this passage uh, very, very clear. And, and the point of the passage, it seems uh, to be saying, is that, this, that the Christian faith thing that, that we are all about is, is supposed to work this way. That, that the Christian faith thing that, that we are all about, it, it, is, it, it grows and it spreads and, and it is passed on from one person uh, to another uh, by uh, the, this, this thing that we call invitation and conversation. Invitation and conversation. And it all starts... At least the way John tells the story, with Jesus at this moment, right here, Jesus saying uh, to anybody, or, or, or to the disciples, come and see. And it's been that way ever since. And I believe that. I embrace that. I affirm that. And if you have, if you have listened to me... Uh, for any time at all, you might have picked up uh, on that because I kind of make a big deal out of, of uh, the invitational aspect of our faith. At least I think I make a big deal out of the invitational aspect of our faith. What do I say at the end of every service uh, that you have been part of uh, with me here? What do I say? Exactly. Exactly. And, 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 and even, even as I say it, some of you, some of you are mouthing the words along with me as I say it. And some of you, my, my, my man Clint responds and he says, I will. Right? Every week. And, 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 and some of you, yeah, you know, some of you think, well, maybe that, that's just kind of a, a kind of a silly thing. Maybe, maybe some of you think it's a gimmicky kind of thing. I, I understand that, but it's really not. It's really not. I really, really do want to invite and encourage folks to have this encounter with Jesus. And, and, and I really want to invite and encourage you all to invite and encourage people to have an encounter with Jesus because I believe, I believe, and I believe that some of you believe the same thing. I believe that there's something about Jesus that has a profound effect on people. I believe that. I believe that an encounter with Jesus changes people's lives in ways that, that we cannot always put into words, but in ways that are always, always, always transformative. It's happened to me. It's happened to many of you. I really, I really want people to have that experience of, of being accepted. I really, really want, 
I really want other people to have the experience of knowing, of really knowing forgiveness. I really, I really want people to have and experience that feeling of real love, of being truly transformed, of discovering real, deep meaning and purpose in their lives. And the only way, the only way that I know for that to happen is to invite people to come and see what Jesus is all about. And that's exactly what's happening in the passage that we read this morning in John's Gospel. I believe that being invitational is such an important part of who we are and what we do and how and how we live our life of faith that when I, when, when I plan my preaching schedule, I plan this, try to plan this weeks and months in advance, that whole thing, that whole aspect of invitation and coming and seeing was what I was going to preach about today. It's what the title of the sermon is come and see. But over the past two weeks, as I've been laid up in, or not in bed, but laid on the couch two weeks, isolated from you all and everyone else, had a lot of time to think, had a lot of time to reflect on, had a lot of time to, to pray about uh, the, this, this sermon and, and this passage, and and, uh, and, and, and and as passionately and as I believe and as important as I believe that invitation is a, such an important part of who we are and what we do, it occurs to me that invitation is not the most important thing that's happening in this scripture passage that we read. There's one verse, I've never, never really paid that much attention to it before, but over the past couple of weeks it's grabbed hold of me and it will not let go. Nathaniel asked the question, how do you know me? And Jesus answers, before Philip found you, before Philip called you, before Philip, uh, Philip invited you to come and see anything at all, before all of that, I saw you. I saw you. I knew where you were. Even before you had any idea that anyone was looking for you, I saw you. I found you. Think about the implications of that. It, 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 it occurs to me that in addition to all the other things uh, going on, all the, all the walking and talking and, and leading and following and coming and seeing and all of that other stuff, there's a whole lot of seeing and finding going on in this passage. It also occurs to me, also occurs to me, that one, one of the best feelings in the world, one of the very best feelings of the world, has to be when you're found. For, for, for children, for children, the best part of the game when they play hide and seek, it's not the hiding and the seeking, it's the finding, right? It's the being found. Have you ever have you ever been have you ever been so completely lost so completely lost that you had absolutely no idea where you were you had you had no idea of what direction that you were going or what direction you should be going 
And, 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 you, and you wandered around in the world and, 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 and you wondered in your mind, how am I going to make it back to a place either that I was and I know or to the place that I want to be? You ever, have you ever experienced that? You remember, you remember the feeling, right? You remember the feeling when you saw a sign or a marker that was familiar to you. You saw, you saw a friendly face, right, that, that, that helped uh, get you uh, back to where you wanted to be. Kuala Lumpur is, is the capital city in Malaysia. It's a city of about uh, 8 million people. Uh, and, and for reference, that's larger than New York City, Okay. I was part of a group, there were seven of us, I was part of a group that was uh, part of a cultural immersion from uh, Southern Methodist University, Perkins School of Theology. We went to uh, Malaysia in this cultural immersion uh, experience. It was uh, five women and, 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 two, and two men, uh, Spencer and I, and we were part of this group. We were in Malaysia for 15 days, and, and our... Uh, our, our guide uh, for part of that time was a gentleman named Dr. Herman Shastri. He was the director of the Malaysian Council of Churches. And, uh, and it was Herman's task uh, to, to shuttle us, to chauffeur us uh, from place to place as we, as we met with different people uh, as part of our, our schedule, part of our agenda. And, and on this particular day, Herman uh, was, was moving us from one meeting to another, and it was across town. And the only problem was that Herman's car only held five people in addition to him. And so, so Dr. Dr. Shastri said, Herman said, you know, uh, looked at Spencer and I, the two guys, and said, uh, uh, I'm going to take the ladies and get them there, and I'll come back and find you. But uh, because the distance is so far across town and our time is so short, uh, you got to help me out. So walk that way. Yeah, that's kind of what I did, too. <laughs> and so Spencer and I started walking that way. And we walked that way for about 45 minutes. Now, we didn't speak the language. We didn't know uh, the customs or the culture. We didn't, even have a, we didn't even have a map. And, and as we're walking, uh, it was not lost upon me that we were literally halfway around the world. And uh, there were lots of things that could have happened to us, and we would never have been seen again, and nobody would ever know. When, um, when Herman finally made his way back and picked us up, he was laughing. And he said, you made it further than I thought you would. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know if that was supposed to make me feel good or not. <laughs> um, but, but I know that... that, that that, that, you, that you tend to walk a lot faster when you're nervous and scared and lost. Mm. May, maybe, maybe it's not, maybe it's not a geographical sense of lostness, a geographical kind of lostness. Maybe, maybe it's more of an emotional or, or an existential uh, kind of lostness. But still, being found can be life-changing, right? I mean, it, 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 it's it, it's like, like a person lost in addiction who finds help and, and, and enters into a life of sobriety. It, it, it's, it, it could be like a, a friend who's lost 
in the throes of depression, who, who, who somehow uh, find this measure of meaning and value in a new relationship. It, it could be maybe, maybe an older parent who uh, is lost to dementia, who still lights up, who, whose face still lights up when, when you hit upon a particular memory tucked deep inside their minds. There are a few things that feel better than being found when you're lost. Except, except perhaps if you are the one who finds someone else who's lost. Especially, especially if that person doesn't even realize that they're lost. When we lived in Ardmore, uh, serving the church there, the, the parsonage, the house was right next door to the church. I mean, literally right next door to the church. And at the time, uh, Haley was off in school and, and, uh, and, and I was home uh, watching Nathan. Nathan was maybe four uh, Debbie was, was off. I don't know if she was working or running errands. She was doing something not nearly as important as staying home and watching me as I watched him. But I, was, I was out in the garage piddling around, doing something in the garage. Nathan was out there with me right by my side until he wasn't. He's gone. And I was panicked. Ran up and down the streets and looked at all the neighbors' houses. I, I, am, I am to the point, I'm going to call the police and then call Debbie. I'm going to do it in that order. <laughs> and I'm, I've got the phone up to my ear when I look out at that very moment and I see Wava, the, the, the church secretary, walking across the parking lot, Nathan in tow. It seems he had, he had decided he's going to go over to the church office and have a little visit with her. And they'd been in, there, in her office talking for about 20, 25 minutes. I don't have any idea what they were, what they were talking about. He was four years old. And, and as they're walking across the parking lot, hand in hand, they're, they're smiling and laughing, clearly, clearly unconcerned with the, with, with the, the distress they have put me through. Mm. He knew, Nathan knew exactly where he was all along. Even if I didn't know where he was. He did not feel lost at all. He had no idea what all the fuss was about. Let alone the panic that, that, that he didn't cause it, but I'm going to say he did. But still, still, he began to laugh and share the excitement that I had when I found him. That feeling of finding my son who was lost was just about the best feeling ever. And that kind of joy that I was experiencing is infectious. Even if he didn't realize what was going on, if he, even if he didn't fully comprehend all that I was excited about, he got excited too. And then I let him have it. <laughs> not really. I, not really. I fussed at him. But I didn't, I didn't do anything. I just, I just fussed at him. We sometimes, we sometimes use words like lost and found in, in the church and, and we ascribe meaning to those words that may not always be accurate. Lost doesn't always have to mean being caught up in something bad, right? Lost doesn't always have to mean being involved in, in, in um, ungodlike activities, Sometimes it does, but sometimes loss can also mean simply being unaware.
We don't know very much about Nathaniel other than what we read in Scripture, which is, which is not a lot of detail. We certainly don't know, we don't know why, what he was doing uh, sitting there under that tree that day. Maybe, maybe he was laying there in the coolness of the shade enjoying a day off from work, right? Maybe, maybe he was laying there in the coolness of the shade uh, pondering the clouds in the sky, lost in, in the awe of the expanse of heaven. Maybe, maybe Nathaniel was thinking about nothing at all. Maybe he was, maybe he was lost in, in the deep, meandering thoughts that we all, so, all sometimes uh, lose ourselves in. Maybe, maybe Nathaniel was just exhausted. Maybe he was just exhausted from all the turmoil and, and, and all the upheaval and all the tension from living under the heavy-handed uh, rule of the Roman occupation, and he was just taking a, a, a respite, brief as it was, from all the lostness of the world that he knew. Maybe, maybe Nathaniel was a, very, was a very faithful man. Maybe he was a very uh, devout man person and 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 he took the opportunity to steal away from the busyness of life uh, to, into this secluded spot to pray and thanking God for all the gifts of the day lost completely lost in a holy moment maybe Nathaniel was lost like that I don't know we don't know but regardless regardless Jesus' words of recognition uh, uh, brings to Nathaniel this whole new understanding of what it means to be seen and what it means to be found by God. <coughs> Pardon me. Here's what I know. Here's what I do know. I know that I know that there is right now. Uh, in our time, in our place, in our world, in our country, even in our churches, I know there is a whole lot of lostness. And perhaps there's reason for that. I don't know if it's good reason, but perhaps there's reason for that. Politics driven by fear and vitriol is a reason Acts of injustice perpetrated by people who use the excuse that the ends justify the means. There, there, there are deep divisions rooted in flawed ideologies and, and ignorant prejudices and rigid religious doctrines that separate us and, 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 and are, are, are hurtful and and harmful. There's a readiness by some to resort to violence to achieve a particular end. There's a disregard uh, by some of verifiable facts along with a proliferation of conspiracy theories that work to, to, to keep upheaval upheaving. War and violent conflict, greed fueled by a false sense of scarcity, disconnected virtual friendships are replacing real connection-forming relationships. The list goes on. I don't have to, I mean, I don't have to, to list everything out. You know. You experience it. You live it every day. Even people of great faith get caught up in this mess swirling around. Even people of great faith who are not participating in any of the craziness except as, 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 as helpless observers, even those folks feel lost in the overwhelming volume of news and activity around us. I do. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes folks 
uh, get, get so engrossed in the goings on of their own lives, both the good things and the bad, that they're lost to what's happening around them. Lost to the hurts and the needs of others. We all know this. We see it, we experience it. It frustrates us. And yet, and yet, this passage in John's gospel reminds us, and I want you to hear this, that God has a heart for the lost. God has a heart for the irresponsible and the self-absorbed and the reckless lost. God has a heart for the rule-following, rigid, and self-righteous lost. God has a, has a heart for the impulsive and the angry and the out of control lost. God has a heart for the timid and the frightened and the confused lost. God has a, has a heart for the younger and the older alike lost. God has a heart for the faithful and the faithless lost. God has a heart even for the people I get mad at and people who get mad at me lost. God's heart for the lost includes us, all of us, you and me. When we're lost, even when we don't know we're lost. And more than that, God sees and finds the lost. So I'm thinking maybe I should have changed the title of my sermon from Come and See to Lost and Found. The good news, the good news, listen, the good news for us is that one of the promises tucked away in this passage is that God sees us. All of us. Where we are. And God finds us, even in our lostness, whether we know we're lost or not, whether, whether we're even looking for God or not. And God is continually looking and seeking and searching and finding. And then, and then when, when God finds us, God always if, issues the invitation to come and see. And that invitation is never, ever, ever taken away. I don't know who needed to hear that today other than me. But I really, really need that word. God this morning. Maybe you needed to hear it as well. May we have eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to receive. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you have called us. You, not even before you call, you have searched for us and you find us. You see us. You come to us and you invite us to come and experience all that you have for us. Even if we're not looking. And then you invite us to invite others. Thank you for not leaving us to ourselves. Forgive us when we're hard headed or slow to respond.
grant us grace that we might be your people for all of your people. This is our prayer. We offer it to you in the name of the one who comes, who sees, who finds, who teaches us to pray as he taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you will please stand and join singing with me in our hymn of response, Jesus Calls Us. You all make that happen. Thank you. What you do is, is, um, is kingdom work. And you need to hear that. You're doing kingdom work. God, we ask that as you, um, uh, as, as we take this uh, moment to uh, offer ourselves and offer our gifts, that you will remind us that we are in partnership with what you are doing in the lives of people. So move in us and through us. Allow us to know the great joy of generosity. Those offerings that are received this day, 
We ask God that you will bless, that you will multiply, that you will grow, and that you will grant us wisdom and faithfulness to be wise stewards so that your kingdom is built and your name is glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. remain standing please let us affirm our faith together as we recite this affirmation of faith um, you'll find it on uh, on the screen or the words in your bulletin we believe in the one God creator and sustainer of all things father of all nations 
the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the Word of God contained in the Old and New Testaments as the sufficient rule of both faith and practice. We believe in the church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will realized in human society and in the family of God where all, we all are brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. You will remain standing this morning for our song of sending forth, Love Never Fails. microphone off. Almost. Almost. <laughs> it's good to see you this morning. So glad that you're here. I, I'm, I'm thankful for our musicians, for our voices, our choir. Uh, we got some folks that are out. Steve is upstairs running the sound. Thank you, brother. Uh, you know, that was uh, quick 
a quick call uh, to that. Uh, we will thank all our technicians up in the studio, making sure we get out over the airways. If, you're, if you'll take a moment, uh, there's an insert in your bulletin. You'll notice there's several uh, things on the calendar coming up this week. And then next week, we've also, uh, the following week, we've got a couple of meetings announced. We'll make sure that we get everybody uh, uh, contacted or do our best to get everybody contacted uh, on those meetings. Um, so uh, just take note of that. Uh, yes. No prayer meeting tonight. No prayer meeting tonight. Yeah, the, it's going to get ugly this evening and I guess early in the morning. Uh, so uh, when you get home today, uh, stay home, bundle up, stay warm, uh, and enjoy each other's company uh, uh, with the folks that are in the household with you. Uh, otherwise, kick them out and hold yourself up in the bedroom. I, I don't know. That's up to you all. So, uh, um, good to see you. Good to be back. And uh, be safe this week. And be a vessel this week. Be a vessel through which people are invited to have an experience with Jesus. But also, be aware that you are not alone, that you're seen, that God finds you, and the invitation that you allow God to extend to others through you is also being extended to you. That's good stuff. I'll invite you to come back next week. I'll go. I get, I get I, you will, yep. And then when you come back, when you come back, bring somebody with you. All right. Now, may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord, the presence of the Holy Spirit live in you and through you and sustain you this day and every day. Amen? Amen. Amen.